everyone, my name is Elsie Ilikana, fourth year BSA students on Mass College of Technology. Republic of RA number 1086 Street, otherwise known as the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act or the CMTA, was signed into law on May 30, 2016. CMTA amended the Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines or the TCCP with the aim of modernizing customs rules and procedures for faster trade, reduce opportunities for the corruption, improvement customs service, delivery and improved supply chain. This is a primary site for the public consultation on the drafting of the implementation rules and regulations or the IRR of the CMTA. Good day everyone! My name is Paula Iorfresho, 4th year BSCA from Maths College of Technology. Today, we unravel the significance of Customs Modernization and Tariff Act, a pivotal legislation reshape our trade landscape. Join me in exploring its transformative impact on a custom procedure and economic efficiency, a cornerstone in our journey towards a more transparent and dynamic global economy. So for today, um, I intend to choose three um, sections. So those are section 106 and section 905 and section 906. So let's start for section 106, the declarant. A declarant may be consignee or person who has a right to dispose of the goods. The declarant shall lodge a goods declaration with the bureau and may be letter A, the importer, being the holder of the bill of leading, or letter B, the exporter, being the owner of the goods to ship out, or letter C, a customs broker acting under the authority of the importer or from the holder of the bill, or letter D, a person duly empowered to act as an agent or attorney, attorney in fact, for each holder. In this case, the consignee or the person who has the right to dispose of the goods in juridical person, it may authorize a responsible officer of the company to sign the goods declaration as declarant on behalf. The goods declaration submitted to the Bureau shall be processed by the declarant or by a licensed customs broker provided that for importation a transi transition period of two years from the effectivity of this act hereby provided during the subparagraph d of this section shall be implemented by the bureau provided further that after two years from the effectivity of this act subparagraph d in this section shall take into effective consistence with international standard and customs best practices. So for my explanation, the declarant um, who can be importer, exporter, customs broker, or an unauthorized agent is responsible for lodging a goods declaration with the Bureau. So if the consignee is, com is a company, an authorized officer may be signed on behalf. For importer, there are two transition period where a person duly empowered as an agent won't be um, required. But after this period, international standard and customs practices will be applied. So next is section 905, the abatement for damage incurred during voyage. So, except as otherwise provided, no abatement of the duties shall be made on account of a damage incurred or dis deterioration suffered during the voyage of importation. And duties will be assessed in the actual quantity imported as um, determined by the customs officer concerned. So, for my explanation, in the absence of uh, specific provisions stating otherwise, so, customs 
customs duty are not reduced for the damage or deterioration that occur during the voyage of importation. So, the assessment is based on the actual quantity of the goods successfully imported. So, as determined by the customs officer itself. So, this rule ensures that duties accurately responds to the quantity of goods that reach their destination regardless of any challenges or losses during the importation journey. So, let's proceed for Section 906, the abatement or refund of duty on missing package. So, when any package appearing in this manifest or bill of lading or airwheel bill is missing, an abatement or refund of the duty shall be made if it is certified by the importer or consignee. So, under pain of penalty for falsification or perjury, and upon uh, production of proof satisfactory of the collection collector concern, that the package is questioned as not be unlawful imported into the Philippines. So, for my explanation is, if a package listed in the manifest or bill of leading is missing, so the importer or consignee can be request a duty abatement or refund to do so they must provide a certification um, risking penalty for falsification or uh, perjury and other satisfactory evidence to the collector so this evidence should convincingly demonstrate that the missing package was not unlawful uh, brought into the Philippines. So, this provision ensures a responsible um, process for adjusting duties in case where the package legitimately or go missing. So, that's all. Thank you for today's. Good day, everyone. My name is Elsie Ielikana, fourth year BSA students from Maths College of Technology. CMTA 6 to mitigate risk, prevent market abuse and foster fair and efficient market operations through the increased transparency and accountability. I choose three sections of CMTA. So the first section that I've choose is section 105, effective date rate of duty. Imported goods shall be subject to the import duty rates under the applicable tariff heading that are affected at the date of importation or upon withdrawal from the warehouse for consumption. In case of withdrawal from free zones for introduction of the customs territory, the jewelry rate of the time of withdrawal shall be applicable when the goods originally admitted whether withdrawn in its original or advanced form. In case of goods sold out at customs public auction, the date of rate of duty of the auction shall apply for the purpose of implementing section 1143 of this act. Explanation. Imported goods are liable to import due to rates specified in the relevant tariff heading and effect of the date of the importation or upon withdrawal from the warehouse for consumption. If goods are withdrawn from the free zones for introduction in the customs territory, the duty rate at the time of withdrawal will apply to the goods originally admitted, regardless of whether they are withdrawn in their original or advanced form. The, the second section is the section 107 or the rights and responsibilities of the declarant. The declarant shall be responsible for the accuracy of the goods declaration and for the payment of all duties and taxes and other charges due for the imported goods. The licensed customs broker shall likewise be responsible for the accuracy of the goods declaration but shall not be responsible for the payment of duties and taxes and other charges due to the imported goods. The declarant shall be signed the goods declaration even when assisted by the licensed customs broker who shall be likewise sign the goods declaration. Explanation The declarant is responsible for the accuracy and payment of duties and taxes 
and charge their licensed customs brokers is the insurance to the declaration of accuracy but isn't accountable for the payment both must sign the goods declaration affirming accuracy and accountability and the last section we have section 601 or the duty and tax on goods intended intended rather for transit transit goods admitted from the storage in a customs banded warehouse or for outward exportation at the port of destination or inland customs office and goods intended for transit covered by the republic act number 10668 otherwise known as an act allowing foreign vessel or transport a coal load foreign cargoes for the domestic transshipment and for the purpose purpose shall not be subject to the payment of duties and taxes of the port of entry provided that may any conditions and security required by the bureau are complied with goods for consumption and other goods intended for the custom transit not covered by the immediately proceeding and the paragraph shall subject to the payment of duties and taxes and the port of discharge explanation imposing duties and taxes on goods intended for the transit serves as a mechanism to balance the facilitation of trade with the revenue protection for the customs authorities by applying duties and taxes at the point of entry and suspending them during the transit countries ensure of a fair contribution to the revenue while allowing to the uninterrupted flow of goods across the borders the approach supports economic integration enhanced security measures and discharge potential mises of the transit system additionally the collection of duties and taxes at the final destination safeguards as the financial financial interest of the importing country and ensured that the benefits of the trade equitability contribute overall the weighing duties and taxes on goods in transit strikes a balance between promoting international trade and maintaining the fiscal integrity of individual of the customs territories good day my name is lorraine shaira el alcacid from max college of technology bsca fourth year i chose section 910 1404 and 1602 from cmta Section 910, Abatement of Duty on Dead or Injured Animals, where it is certified under pain of penalty for falsification or perjury. And upon production of proof satisfactory to the Bureau that an animal subject of importation dies or suffers injury before arrival or while in custody of the customs. The duty due thereon shall be abated provided that its carcass on board or in customs custody is removed in the manner required by the Bureau and at the expense of the importer. My explanation is states that the duty owed on an animal subject to importation shall be reduced if it dies or is injured before to arrival or while in customs custody. And this is certified under penalty or perjury or falsification. The importer is required to furnish the bureau with adequate evidence and remove from the carcass either on board or in customs detention. Following the bureau's instruction and paying for the removal themselves, this clause is designed to prevent importers from being assessed tariffs on animals that have passed away or sustained injuries prior to or during importation. Section 04, Failure to Declare Baggage Whenever dutiable goods are not declared by any person arriving within the Philippines, such goods shall be seized and the person may obtain release of such goods. If not imported contrary to any law, upon payment of a surcharge equivalent to 30% of the landed cost of such goods. In addition to all duties, taxes, and other charges, do nothing in this section shall pre preclude the feeling of criminal action against the offender. My explanation 
concerns the failure to declare dutiable com commodities upon arrival in the Philippines, stating that such thing, all things shall be seized. To acquire the release of these products, the person responsible must pay a surcharge equal to 30% of the landed cost. In addition to any other relevant duties, taxes, and charges, importantly, this part emphasizes that criminal action can still be followed against the offender, emphasizing the gravity of the offense. And the last section is Section 1602, Official Seal. The Commission is authorized to adopt an official seal. Explanation empowers the Tariff Commission to adopt an official seal. This official seal acts as a formal mark indicating the, co the Commission identity and validity. The design and application of the seal are most likely governed by the Commission's internal norms or guidelines. Under Section 431, Release of goods after payment of duties and taxes. Goods declared shall be released when duties and taxes and other local charges have been paid or secured and all the pertinent laws, rules and regulations have been complied with. With the Bureau requires laboratory analysis of samples, detailed technical documents, or expert advice. It may release the goods before the result of such examination are known after posting of sufficient security by the declarant. This means that the goods are released when duties and taxes and other lawful charges have been paid or secured, and all pertinent laws, rules, and regulations have been complied with. The second one is Section 432, Release of Goods to the Holder of Bill of Lading or Airway Bill. Any customs officers who release goods to the consignee or lawful holder of the bill of lading or airway bill shall not be liable for the any defect or irregularity in its negotiation unless the custom officer has notice of the defect or irregularity. This means that a customs officer releasing goods to the consignee or lawful holder of the bill of lading or airway bill is not liable for any defect or irregularity in the negotiation of these documents unless the officer has prior notice of such defect. The third one is Section 436, Fine or Surcharge on Goods. Goods subject to any fine or surcharge shall be released only after the payment of the fine surcharge. This means that the goods subject to any fine or surcharge can only be released after the payment of the specified fine of surcharge. This provision underscores the requirement for settling additional charges before the release of goods, ensuring compliance with imposed fine of surcharges as a prerequisite for releasing the cargo. Section 300, Customs Jurisdiction. For the effective implementation of this Act, the Bureau shall exercise jurisdiction over all seas within Philippine territory and all coasts, ports, airports, harbors, bays, rivers, and inland waters, whether navigable or not from the sea, and any means of conveyance. The Bureau shall pursue imported goods subject to seizure during its transport by land water and air and shall exercise jurisdiction as may be necessary for the effective enforcement of this act. When a vessel or aircraft becomes subject to seizure during its transport by land for violation of this act, a pursuit such as vessel or aircraft which began within territorial waters or airspace may be continued beyond the same and a vessel or aircraft may be seized in the high seas or international airspace. Section 300 um, defines the extent of customs jurisdiction for the effective implementation of the Customs Act. The, the jurisdiction of the Bureau covers all seas the, within Philippine territory and all coasts, ports, airports, harbors, bays, rivers, and inland waters regardless of navigability from the sea and any means of conveyance. The Bureau has the authority to pursue and exercise jurisdiction 
over imported goods subject to seizure during transport by land, water, and air. Additionally, if a vessel or aircraft becomes subject to seizure for violating the Customs Act, a pursuit initiated within territorial waters or airspace may continue these boundaries, allowing for the seizure of the vessel or aircraft in the high seas or international airspace. So the second section is Section 400, Goods to be Imported Through Customs Office. All goods imported to the, into the Philippines shall be entered through a customs office at a port of entry or may be admitted to or removed from a free zone as defined in this act as the case may be. So section 400 states that all goods imported into the Philippines must be en entered through a customs office at a port of entry or may be admitted to or removed from a free zone depending on the circumstances. Next one is the section 401, importation subject to goods declaration. Unless otherwise provided for in this act, all imported goods shall be subject to lodgement of a goods declaration. A goods declaration may be for consumption, for customs bonded warehousing, for admission, for conditional importation, or for customs transit. Section 401 specifies that all imported goods are subject to the lodgement of a goods declaration. The goods declaration can be consumption, customs, bonded warehousing, admission, conditional importation, or customs transit. Section 219, Authority to Enter Properties. Any person exercising police authority may at any time enter pass through and search any land, enclosure, warehouse, store, building, or structure not specifically used as dwelling house. When a security personnel or any other employee lives in the warehouse, store, or any building, structure, or enclosure that is used for storage of goods, it shall not be considered as dwelling house for purposes of this act. It means the police authority, as specified in this section, are empowered to enter traverse and search any land, warehouse, store, building, or structure not primarily designated as dwelling house at any time. If security personnel or employees are reside in warehouse, store, or other building used for goods to raise, it does not qualify as dwelling house under this act. It means the provision ensure flexibility in conducting searches related to customs enforcement activities. Section 423. Determination of the de minimis value. No duties and taxes shall be collected on goods with an FOB or FCA value of 10,000 pesos below. The Secretary of Finance shall adjust the de minimis value as provided here every three years after the effective of this act. The value herein stated shall be adjusted to its present value using the CPI as published by PSA. In section 423 establishes that no duties and taxes shall be collected in goods with an FOB or FCA value of 10,000 pesos or below. The Secretary of Finance shall adjust the de minimis value every three years after the effectivity of this act used by the CPI published by the PSA to determine the present of value. And also, it ensures that small value goods are not subjected to taxes and duties while also allowing for adjustment to be made based on infl inflation. Section 1432, Failure to Report Fraud any employee of the Bureau who has knowledge of any fraud committed against a government pertaining to customs revenue who fails to report all information relative thereto, the district collector shall be penalized with the imprison imprisonment of not less than six years and one year and one day but riot more than 12 years and fine at not least than 500,000 pesos but not more than 1 million pesos.
the offender shall suffer the additional penalty of perpetual dis disqualification to hold public office, to vote, to participate in the election, all the benefits of the offender due from service in the government, including separation and retirement benefit. Benefits shall be profited. profited. So in this section 1432 imposes harsh penalties on any bureau employee who fails to report to the district collector knowledge of fraud against the government involving customs income. The penalties include 6 to 12 years in person and fine of 500,000 and 2 1 million pesos and permanent prohibition from holding public office voting or participating in election. Furthermore, the offender forfeits all benefits owed to them as a result of their government work, including separation and retirement payments, emphasizing the terrible implication of failing to report such as fraud. Section 711, Dumping Duty, the Provision of Republic Act No. 8752, otherwise known as the Anti-Dumping Act of 1999, are hereby adopted. This means that the Bureau of Custom will implement the provision of the Anti-Dumping Act of 1999 to prevent the unfair trade practice of dumping, which is the act of exporting goods to another country at a lower price than the price charged in domestic market. Sub Section 712, Safeguard Duty, the provision of this Republic Act No. 8800, otherwise known as the Safeguard Measure Act, are hereby adopted. This means that the Bureau of Custom will implement the provision of the Safeguard Measure Act to provide temporary relief to domestic industries that are suffering from increased imports that cause serious injury or threat of serious injury to the domestic industry. Section 713, Countervailing Duty The provision of Republic Act No. 8751, otherwise known as the Act is strengthening the mechanism for the imposition of countervailing duties on imported subsidized products, commodities, or articles of commerce in order to protect domestic industries from unfair trade competition. Amending for the purpose Section 302, Part 2, Title 2, Book 1 of Presidential Decree Number 1464, otherwise known as the Tariff and Custom Code of the Philippines, as amended, are hereby adopted. Adopts the provision of Republic Act Number 8751, which strengthens mechanism for impos imposing countervailing duties and subsidized imported products to protect domestic industries from unfair trade competition. This adoption is an amended to Section 302, Part 2, Title 2, Book 1 of Presidential Decree No. 1464, also known as the Tariff and Commission Code of the Philippines. Good day to all of us. My name is Jenny Ann P. Salese from Mats College of Technology, 4th year BSAA. I chose Section 214, 215, and 216 from CMTA. Chapter 3, Exercise of Police Authority. Section 214, Persons Exercising Police Authority. For the effective implementation of this act, the following persons are authorized to effect search, seizure, and arrest. A. Officials of the Bureau, District Collectors, Deputy District Collectors, Police Officers, Agents, Inspectors, and Guards of the Bureau. B. Upon author authorization of the Commissioner, Officers and members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP and National Law Enforcement Agencies and C. Officials of the BIR on all cases falling within the regular performance of their duties when payment on internal revenue taxes is involved. All officers authorized by the Commissioner to exercise police authority shall at all times coordinate with the commissioner. Goods seized by deputized officers pursuant to this section shall be physically turned over immediately to the bureau. 
unless provided under existing laws, rules, and regulations. For this purpose, mission order shall clearly indicate the specific name carrying out the mission and the task to be carried out. Subject to the approval of the Secretary of Finance, the Commissioner shall define the scope, areas covered, procedures, and conditions governing the exercise of such police authority, including custody and responsibility for the seized goods. The rules and regulations to this effect shall be furnished to the concerned government agencies and personnel for guidance and compliance. All seizure pursuant to the section must be effected in accordance with the provision on the, on the conduct of seizure proceedings provided for in Chapter 3 and 4 of Title 11 of this Act. Explanation Note, Chapter 3 and 4 of Title 11 of this Act, Title 11 Administrative and Judicial Procedures. Chapter 3 tells us alert orders. Alert orders are written orders issued by authorized customs officers on the basis of derogatory information regarding possible non-compliance with the SMTA. After the lodgement of goods declaration and before the release from customs custody. To know more about alert order, the reference found on CMO 07-2018. Chapter 4 tells us seizure and forfeiture. Seize or seizure Customs formally takes possession of the goods. Only goods that are forfeited can be seized. Goods which are legitimately imported or exported cannot be seized. Unlawfully exported means exported in breach of the Act or any other Act. Forfeiture shall refer to the acquisition of ownership by the government for an established violation of CMTA as a result of the forfeiture proceedings. Forfeiture of seized goods in the Bureau of Customs is a proceeding against the goods and not against the owner. Section 250. Place where authority may be exercised. All persons exercising police authority as described in the preceding section shall only exercise powers within customs premises as provided for in Section 303 of this Act and within the limits of the authority granted by the Commissioner. Port and airport authorities in all ports of entry shall provide authorized customs officers with unhampered access to all premises within their administrative jurisdiction. Explanation Note, Section 303 Control over premises used for customs purposes. The Bureau shall, for customs purposes, have exclusive control direction and management of customs offices, facilities, warehouse, ports, airports, wards, infrastructure, and other premises in the customs districts in all cases without prejudice to the general police powers of the local government units or LGUs, the Philippine Coast Guard and the, of law enforcement agencies in the exercise of their respective functions. Explosive control means restricted or limited the person, group, or area concerned. In other words, no third party. Only those who are authorized and within the limits of the authority granted by the Commissioner. Section 216. Exercise of Power of Seizure. Any person exercising police authority under this Act has the power and duty to seize any vessel, aircraft, cargo, goods, animal, or any other movable property when the same is subject to forfeiture or when they are subject of a fine imposed under this Act. Explanation My explanation of this is that in case there is importation and or exportation found by an unauthorized person and there is a probable cause of non-compliance of laws, rules, and regulation of this Act, that goods will be subject to seizure and the person exercising it must be an authorized person which are refers to Section 214 of this Act, since they are the ones who have, legis who have legal discretion. Discretion is the ability to judge between right and wrong, which is sufficient to hold one liable for one's own conduct. Good evening, sir. So, uh, this is the first section that I will defend. So, Section 211, 
of the CMTA or the temporary succession of deputy district collector to position of acting district collector. In absence or disability of a district collector or in case of vacancy, the deputy district collector shall temporarily discharge the duties of the district collector. Should there be no district collector, the district collector shall designate in writing a senior ranking customs officer to temporarily perform the duties of the district collector. In case there are two or more senior ranking customs officers with equal length of service, a drawing of lots shall be undertaken. The district collector shall report the designation to the commissioner within 24 hours after the designation. So, for example, is si district collector is a designation in Batangas. So, pag ma-designate sa Batangas, um, mulay, if ever walay magpuli sa iyaha or walay ma ma-assign there as a, for example, sa sa, sa, sa diri sa Davao. So, if wala yung ma-assign diri sa Davao, is mag, uh, ang, ang deputy district collector is siya ang i-designate sa district collector para siya ang mag uh, temporarily na mag-act as district collector. So, if ever ang Davao is wala yung deputy district collector, so, mangita o mga high-ranking na customs officer diri sa Davao. So, if for example, na yung mga two or more or mga five yung mga uh, high-ranking customs officer, so, magbunot-bunot daw na sila or magdrawing sila o lots kung kinsa ang ma bunot is maura to siya ang mahimo uh, temporarily Deputy District Collector. So, moto siya akong first na section ay defend. Nagi defend. So, the second is the section 108 of the CMTA or the penalties for errors in good declaration. The Bureau shall not impose substantial penalties for errors when such errors are inadvertent and there was no fraudulent intent or gross negligence in the commission thereof, provided that in order to discourage repetition of such errors, a penalty may be imposed but shall not be excessive. So, for example, I, ako mismo nagkamali ko sa pag-lodge. So, imis na dapat is na 20 pieces or 20 pieces. Ang ako ang nabutang is 15 pieces. So, kana siya, in order na dili na siya ma-repeat na mali, magpaano na sila. Na, so, uh, ako ang na last na hinumduman is around 5,000 ang penalty. Ana na uh, mali, na mistake. If kana lang ba bisan og kana lang siya na mali lang or mga by pila lang ka ano as long as nay mali sa document is mag-impose jud og penalty pero dili siya ingon na kanang excessive or kana murag sobra na pud siya so next is the section 1140 or of this MTA or the place of disposition of goods upon upon the order of the district collector goods goods may be sold or otherwise disposed of at the port where the goods are located unless the commissioner shall direct its transfer to another port so this section outlines the procedures for the disposition of import of imported goods that are, for example, na abandoned or na seized or na, na forfeit. So, ang ganaasya na mga goods is 
sagar na ana is subject na siya for um auction or for the government um consumption or otherwise if a declare sa district collector na ibalin siya og port or tie for example is naadra sa Davao is na abandoned na shipment so untahay magpuno ang dra sa may ports of Davao is depende na sa iya if magdeclare siya kung asa niya i transfer ang mga goods na subject for um place disposition of goods so depende sa iya if asa niya i it transfer it either sa Panabo or the or sa part of the jungles. So that's all. Thank you.